Just like this glass case protects the art inside, you want to do everything you can to make sure your home is a safe place. Thieves can be pretty tricky these days, so if you want to outsmart the robbers, you need to think like one. We stole some tips from a security expert to help you out. percent of burglaries happen the exact same way. What happens is that a crook's looking for cash and things they can turn into cash as quickly as possible. So if they come to a house, they go to the front door, they'll knock on the door. Typically if somebody answers the door, uh, they'll have a story. Uh, they're looking for a strange address or looking for Bob or they've just got something that doesn't make a lot of sense. You can know, be pretty confident that if someone comes to your door with some, a strange story, it doesn't make any sense. Most likely they're casing out the house. It's a good time to call 911 uh, to let the police know that, that somebody's, somebody's been there. What they're doing is they're trying to verify that nobody's home. Uh, and if they feel that nobody's home, they'll knock again on the front door, and they go around to the back door, do the same thing, try to verify that nobody's there. Pick whichever door looks weakest, normally using a, a small crowbar or a screwdriver, and then they'll kick the door in. It's invariably the, the door frame itself that snaps, and they go straight to the master bedroom. Inside the master bedroom, they pull out the bedside table drawers, pull them out, dump them onto the floor, then into the closet. You know, it's cash, jewelry, and things that can be turned into cash right away. It's a lot of really simple, cheap things that you have to do in order to make the alarm that you're going to pay for have any real value. Something as simple as having the, the, the gates locked. You know, this is just a, an example of a, of a lock. There's a key keyway on both sides, so you can't reach over, you can't pull a string. In our experience, things like locking side gates and the back gates, even just with a $5 padlock, goes a long way of, of deterring a, a crook, because what happens is they can just climb the fence, but when they compare that to uh, someone down the street whose gates are wide open, they'll just walk in. Typically, if a, if a crook's gonna break glass, uh, it's rare from the smash a huge pain. They'll smash a pane like this. So they reach to smash, and then they'll reach in and try to unlock the door. So what we've done on these doors is we've got, uh, it takes a key on both sides. So now the idea is they smash the glass, they reach in, they try to turn the knob. It doesn't work. The glass break sensor goes off, and we're on the way. So the Achilles heel of any alarm system is a telephone line. So you can spend all, this, all the money on an alarm system, but it's relying exclusively on the phone line to send a signal. So what happens is most people's homes, they've got a TELUS box outside, has to be outside, and exposed cable. So if a crook comes and cuts the telephone line outside or opens up the box and cuts the line, the alarm can't communicate, so there's no signal that goes through. So there's a number of things you can do. You can try to physically protect it, whether putting the, the line into conduit or building a big box around it. Alternatives are using cellular as a backup. The important thing is that your security is in your redundancy. So it's in having multiple levels of detection and multiple levels of communication. A monitored alarm is the last place you should be spending money. Uh, in order to get full value from an alarm, you have to have immediate response. So it's really about doing a lot of the physical security first. And we always recommend you spend your money first on proper locks, proper doors, that sort of stuff. And then the alarm goes on top. Notice a few cracks in your home's armor? Here are some security companies who can help assess your needs. Usually a home analysis is free, so be sure to ask. 